Hello everyone and welcome to Lawrence Plays, where it's time for another um, catch-up episode of what, what I've been up to in uh, Mi Minecraft Dungeons, Dragons and Space Shuttles. So you join me here in what used to be my wizard's dungeon area. And as you can see, things have changed a little bit here. For one thing, well someone came in while I was away last week and did some redecorating, which is very nice of them. So we've got this lovely wood panelling and um, seared brick uh, uh, stripe around the middle and it looks, yeah, it looks much nicer now. I'm, I'm uh, quite, quite impressed with what they've done. Um, and, but <clears throat> all of the machines have got and storage and everything has gone from here. The, uh, the blood pool is now been filled with water for some reason the blood tanks over there have all gone so yes this this area is now no longer in use for uh, for wizardly wizardly businesses <laughs> that's where the, um, the the column of tanks used to be so what's changed well mike has built this um well, it's, this is my new wizard's town. Now, it's still a little bit under construction, which is like why it looks like an ice cream sandwich at the top there. Um, but the idea is that if, if this, um, there's going to be another row of the, uh, the white bricks around the top there. So we've got this sort of tower shape. And eventually, there's going to be a sort of a dark fortress around the bottom. And then this sort of nice tower tower thing going up here made out of made made in white and then the, the white dish on the top that is a large garden area because all of the um a lot of the white magic stuff involves a lot of growing plants and flowers and things so having a big area up there to grow plants is an extremely useful idea so i'm going to go over there and have a ha have a look and show you around a bit Oop, and bounce up here so once again, we've got the uh, the blood tanks in here as much as before, and they're very nearly full. Um, there's, Mike has been generating extremely large quantities of blood, and I'll talk about why and how in a moment because it's a little bit um, a little bit of a surprise and a little bit silly. But the idea is that this this tank is is here and easy for, easy to use for the um, for the players in order to drop off any blood they've created from going out and doing hunting and things. It then goes down into this area down here, which is the sort of the dungeon basement area of the um, of the fortress. And so these tanks go down here, and then they go quite a long way further down underground, just to give lots and lots of room for it. There's then this pumping system here that will take the blood out of the tanks and automatically put it into the blood infuser. So when I put something in here, it will be automatically infused blood. Can I do it with wood? I don't know. I don't know. You can't inf blood infuse wood. Okay, but. Generally, as soon as you put something in here, the blood will flow from the uh, from the from the tanks here in, into the blood infuser. It'll be and it'll be infused, and you can so it should just work without needing to faff around with buckets or tanks or or anything like that. So that should be really really easy to use. Only problem is, as I said, it's nearly full, so there's uh, more blood than we know what to do with, which is lovely. I've still got. I've moved the Hellfire Forge over here as well, and this is basically this is the thing that you use for will casting. So you can use this to turn um, to, to use the will from these gems in order to make things like the sentient swords and and various other things besides. Um, I haven't done a great deal with this yet. Um, I was concentrating mostly on the flowers this time, so I've um, this hasn't take, hasn't seen any real advancement, but it's moved over here. And we've now got quite a lot of will stored up in these in these uh, gems. We've got 64, 36, so that's uh, 17, 100, 145, 100, about 170 will, which feels like a lot because it's more than I've had at any other point in the past. I'm sure that in the fairly near future it will seem like not very much at all. But at the moment down here I'm keeping all of the stuff that goes into making all of the uh, all of the dark magic related things. So we've got this got this bowl of promises here that's just sitting there gently bubbling away in the chest we've got the dark gems we've got these spikes um and so on and so on so we've got various different things and at some point i will come back and do some more dark magic with all of this stuff and we shall see we shall see i don't because i don't really know yet so the next thing is at the moment getting up to the top of the tower is rather difficult uh mike did build a massive staircase that went all the way up the middle here but it turns out that the staircase was really, really difficult to use because it was narrow and spirally. And when you tried to slime sling up it like this, you'd sort of fly up the you'd fly up the middle of it, sure. But then it was really difficult to actually get onto the staircase and it didn't take you all the way up to the top. So instead, what I've now put in is this shelf system across halfway up. So you can jump up onto here and then from here you can do another slime sling jump and that'll ping you out right up onto the top here. So, as I was saying earlier, the top of the tower, we've got this um, large area in the middle, 
that's for, for storage and whatnot. And I think at some point we're probably going to put in a floor level at about this level here that goes all the way across. And then maybe either completely fill this underneath area in or have a little storage area underneath. But at, but the idea is that this is supposed to be, I think this is going to be a flat floor at some point to make, make things a little, look a little bit better up here and a little bit more deliberate. So well, it's, it's dripping through the ceiling, which is a bit of a shame, but um, I might might go and fix that at some point. Anyway, over here we've got uh, these are all the flower petals that I mentioned before that I was trying to de trying to deal with in the last in the last episode. So I had at one point I had various petals locked to sort of flowers locked in these things, and I didn't have any of those flowers. And I've now, but I've now come along. I think Tristan was kind enough to um, to throw a load of the. Uh, this stuff, the floral fertilizer down, which then gives you random flat, random flower colors, and he did it enough times to get all of them. So I've now got a full set. There's not a great deal of some of these, so there's, a, um, and I probably should grow some more of these ones where there's, where it's, it's in sort of there's 11 or less than 20 left. But I do also have an emergency chest over here, uh, which has 10. Except I was going to say it has 10 of each of them. For some reason, there's only nine blue ones. So let's fix that. Yoink. And then over here, we can put, uh, is it that one? Yes. Apparently not. That in there. So there we go. Now we've got 10 of every single one of the petal types. And this is, as it says on the sign, the emergency petal store. So they're only for only for growing more pet, more flowers from. The idea being that as you, as I go through and do magic stuff, I'll, I'll, take, all the, I'll take the petals out of here. And maybe I will, maybe I won't notice when it starts to run a bit low. But if it ever gets to the point that these are empty... I know I've got an emergency supply over there that I can then use just to make sure that I everything everything work, um, that I never actually run out and have to run around like headless chicken again. Over here we've got stores of sort of spare miscellaneous flowery stuff and plants and apparently some signposts. Uh, so these are all just being kept in a sort. Of, we've got various. So the flower the flower petals can be ground down into. Um, into powder and those are useful for dyes for all kinds of different recipes the seeds are very useful for um making making e e exotic types of flowers for the for the um it's not mystical agriculture but for the white magic stuff which i'll talk about in a moment um and then there's various other flowers and weird things that i've picked up the uh, the, the, the shimmering mushrooms, the black lotus, frost lilies. I've kept all of these up here because they're clearly plant-related things, but they're not the right sort of plants, I suppose, in that they're um, they're not that they're not the the um, this sort. What what are these called? They're not mystic. They're not botania flowers. They are other types of flowers. So I'm just keeping them in here as somewhere to somewhere to put them for now. Um. This chest, I've no idea. I think this is just a dump, bit of a dump chest for me at the moment. I've been, um, I've, I've got some various bits of wooden things and, and apparently some stained glass and various other things. That I've just been keeping around here because I'm going to need them for various things, but I don't, I can't remember what at the moment. And then over here, I've got a chest where I'm keeping tools and apparently an inferior apple. Um, the idea of the, I don't, I don't know. The idea of having a chest there is it means I can then get those tools when I need them for the crafting here, and also. And also for this, no, not for this one. That's a shame. Um, but it is there and handy. And I, I think at some point I'm going to move that from there to in the middle here, so that hopefully I can then use it for this one as well. This is my um, mage's workshop. I've not used this yet. I only built it right at the end of the last episode, uh, last stream, because it was there as the next as the next quest thing. So I thought I might as well make it. So that's why that's there. Um, it, the idea, the idea is, it, it, it feels like I've got this all sticking out a bit too far now. I would have put it here, but unfortunately, that's the is the the exterior wall of the tower. So if I take that block out, everything falls miles away down below. So that's not ideal. And it is blocking the stairs a little bit, but mm, I think I don't really care. Maybe I'll maybe I'll have a reorganise of this at some point. Anyway, up on the top here, we've got this large area of um, of, of, of soil, and this is the growing area for the um, for, for for the magical stuff. Uh, and it's got various things up here. So we've got these um, these pure daisies that I talked about in an, in an earlier episode. And these are the ones where if you put wood or stone next to them, magic happens. And then after a minute, they turn into living wood, which you can use for things. Things like creating this this wand, for example. Then over here, we've got... Uh, this, this is the ma mana system. And this is one of the big things I was working on in the last stream. Um, and unfortunately, the plant I had in here has now wilted, which is a bit of a shame, because in here there was what's called a um, aqua something or other, not that one. Um, I don't know. There was 
It, it had a flower name and a pun in it. Let's 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 see if I can find it in the quests. Here, oh, here we go. Hydro Angels. So that, that, that was the pun I was thinking of. So you make these and you plant them in here. And as long as they've got access to water, which is what these pools are for, then they will produce mana. And now mana is a useful thing that you can then use to do um, stuff. I'm not really quite sure what it's for yet, but I, I'm just following through the quest lines and gradually learning. And you have this thing here, which is a mana spreader. And if I switch to the wand, then you can see what it's connected to. So the, the mana spreader is connected to this pool over here. And that means anything that generates mana within its catchment area will then be passed on. The mana will be passed onto the pool. Do I have anything flammable left? No, I don't. One moment, please. So, for example, the um, the hydro angel in there was generating mana. So this is capturing it, putting it into the pool. Down here, there's an endo flame, and now this is another type of uh, magic flower. And this has the amazing power. If you throw flammable things at it, it'll pick them up and burn them like that. And wh while it's burning, it'll be creating mana. And also notable is that this blue flower over here glows blue or has little blue sparkly things coming off it that are very hard to see during the day um, when it's when the when the pool next to it is actually filling up. Now it's not filling up very much or very quickly because that would burn very, very quickly. But we can have a look at this. If I wave my wand at it, we can find out that it's about about an eighth full, maybe a bit more than an eighth. And that's doing really well because at the end of the last uh, stream, that was only about, there was about one pixel along that uh, progress bar across the middle. So... I've managed to gather quite a lot since then, and that's probably from that Hydro Angel before, before it withered over there. And I think Tristan has also been in between, since the last stream, has been feeding quite a lot of fuel to my Endo Flames. So that's um, that's helping to fill this pool up reasonably effectively. And um, there's now enough in there that I can make a certain amount of mana related things. Like this Mana Steel Ingot, and that works by, if I take this um, iron, for example, uh, let's just do one of these for now. If I throw that into there, then there's a puff of magic. You can see the red red blobs coming off there, and it's now produced an extra mana steel ingots. So you can use you can use the mana in here to to turn things into magical versions of themselves with re, with reasonable ease, just like that. So that's um, yes, that's going quite well. I think a bit of redesign around here is probably going to be required because this is kind of ugly. I think what I probably want to do is replace all of these. Um, pieces of wood with earth raise the whole thing up a little bit and then plant these ender flames slightly higher up so yes i think the um the hydro angel has to go in in the bottom down there but the rest of it i think can be can probably be put higher up and this will still work with them and it'll look a bit more sensible um we'll still have to have the hydro angel in a hole but never mind so this water up here is why there's dripping coming through the roof here because it turns out if you have water and then one block and then open space then it drips through um, which is a bit of a shame but as far as I'm aware it's only a cosmetic issue so it doesn't actually matter at this point. Speaking of things that are largely cosmetic I wonder if this is still here. Yes I decided it'd be fun to have a, um, a blood fall off the side of the um, off the side of the uh, tower so if I boop that then melt it back into smash it back into liquid blood we can have a stream of blood falling off the side of the tower, which is absolutely lovely. Um, I think this looks completely wrong coming off the top of the um, the light magic tower. Um, because having having a stream of blood coming from the top of the light magic is kind of wrong and a bit weird. But what I think I might do, once we get round to building the, the sort of the fortress of doom around the bottom of it, out of probably this stuff or some other similarly dark bricks, is I'll put some crenellations around the top that's made out of the hardened blood, and that means that whenever we have a um, whenever we have a thunderstorm, we'll get blood pouring off the sides of the um, or whenever it rains rather, we'll get blood pouring off the sides of the dark fortress, which I think will be quite atmospheric and kind of disgusting. I mean, cool. So that's. That's most of what I've been up to, I think. Um, I did also, I did the, um, the, ha the claim all the quests and have a big explosion thing down here in, in the um, in the bottom here. And that's why there's these big chests over here, because I've just been shoving all of the junk I gained from, from those quests um, into this one so far. So I've got lots of coins. I've got some redstone, actually. That's useful. I've got some magic compound I don't know what to do with. There's some snowballs. There's a Snickers bar. Let's eat a Snickers bar. I'm, I'm, um, I'm hungry. Nom, 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 nom. That wasn't very nutritious. Okay, so there's loads of stuff in here that I can, uh, that I need to sort out and tidy up, and that's sort of that's going to be a bit of a mission. But at some point, I need to do it and just tidy everything up. So, yeah, I'll have to. I'll, I'll need to do that. And I think that has been me for this stream. 
Um, that's everything I've done. Fortunately, there's quite a lot of other people playing on the server, so I've got a lot more to talk about yet. Now, obviously, Mike's main thing, at least between streams, was building my um, was building the massive tower. Actually, I'm going to slime sling off the top of it because that's fun. I'm still not very good with the slime sling, as you might have noticed. Okay, here we are up on the top. So the main thing that I think Mike has been doing is, is obviously he's building at this tower for me, and he's done a very good job of it. It is, even if it looks like a, a crash Starship Enterprise, it's still very, very good. Um, but there's been other progress as well. So, for example, Al has continued a little bit with the um, the building over there of, of the barracks building. He didn't do a huge amount on it because he got a bit sort of bored of spending a whole stream building. So he's done a few other things. That's a lot further than I needed to fly. <laughs> Let's try and bounce over there. So this is the um, this is the fun of the slime boots because they're really bouncy. You can cross the um, you can cross the world fairly quickly until you run out of momentum like that. Um, so yeah, okay the. Um, the, the carpets in here have, have have now been finished off. We've got a couple of beds. We don't have a roof yet, which means if you sleep, you'll probably get right, your face rained on. And I think the carpeting has been made a little bit more um, sensible, for want of a better word. It's a bit, it's a little bit less garish. It makes a little bit more. The patterns make a little bit more sense, um, a little bit. And there's still a head over here. But I believe Al has also been working on the um, in in the uh, smeltery building, which is over here. And I didn't. Well, I've, I've landed outside the windows. Let's let's go around and go in. <laughs> so over here, yes, there's been some major expansion. Um, we've got we've still got a tank here that's work, that's supposed to power. No, the squeezer is supposed to fill this tank up with um, I forget what. I think it's I think it's methane gas or something from that's burned in one of the other machines. But we've got we've got I see we've got an am anvil. It's apparently slightly damaged. Crafting tables. A lot of the things have been moved over here. So we've got blacksmith workshops, engineers workshops, and things like this. All, all of this allows you to sort of do more of the um, sort of the building related stuff over here and there's a pool of water here for some reason I'm not quite sure what that's for probably I don't I don't actually know what a lot of this does we should probably have a show and tell at some point in the next stream um, but the idea is that we've then got we've got I think we've got something along here that generates power um, oh yes a steam dynamo here so that takes in fuel and water presumably um, yes yeah, so we've got it's got you put fuel in it water comes in probably from here or maybe oh no, no I remember I was talking about this you can also you can also pick up the um, tank from here like this fill it up and then dump it into dump it into here I don't know oh okay so the um, the coal the coal is in the um, is in in the item hopper so it's automatically fed into the generator the generator um, oh I put that in the wrong place Ah, I have made a mess. <laughs> Sorry, everyone. Is that fixed? Have I fixed the mess? Mostly, but I've knocked some knocked some torches around all over the place. Is that is that fixed? I think it is. Yes. We just need to wait for this to flow back and uh, and fix itself. So once this has subsided, I shall um I shall correct my um my error there and put the uh, put the torch back. Right. Like so there we go. Um, <laughs> is that everywhere? No. Let's put one on the wall because then it's a bit safer from people doing stupid things like I just did. <laughs> okay, so I'm pretty sure somehow you're supposed to take water from there and you put it into the um, put it into the uh, steam dynamo and then it makes you more power. I'm going to put this back over here before I make any more <laughs> break anything else. And that's then ca captured in this battery and the power can then be used by the pulverizer, the compactor, and the sawmill. And these are great. So these these allow you to turn, um, for example, ingots into plates. So if I wanted an iron plate, I could put one of those in there. You get the bar growing gradually. Um, and once it's finished growing, ping, you get an iron plate, and that is half the price of before. Because if you use a hammer, you need two ingots to make an iron plate. With this machine, instead of the, instead of using a hammer, it, it, you use the machine, it uses electricity, but you get your plate from one ingot. It also removes any wear and tear on the uh, on the hammer. So it's, you, as I'll put it, you're replacing durability with electricity, which is an excellent way of doing it. Pulverizer, I and saw, uh, sawmill will cut um, planks into no will cut wood into planks presumably or something like that I wonder if I can cut those I can what does it turn them into slabs okay cunning so that, those are going to be quite useful because I was thinking of putting in some more stairs into my tower over there at some point but that'll uh, that'll have to wait let's put this iron plate in here now to demonstrate it it's de demonstrate. there's quite a lot of iron plates there now because they're quite cheap to make um, what else is going on here? This looks like oh, this is this is a um, a tool and weapon manufacturing thing. So you got the um, the stencil you can make you can make make basically you can make 
novelty tools. I've not actually done any of this yet, and this is something I really should do, but I've been concentrating on other stuff. But it allows you to make a tool out of lots and lots of different bits and pieces, and all of those different pieces, diff different materials give you different um, effects. So, for example, you can make the head out of uh, out of diamond, so it's it's very effective. You could make a, a, one, another piece out of wood so it slowly regenerates health. You can make part of it out of lapis so it's lucky I think. These may, some of these may be wrong but those are the sort of the general ideas behind the uh, behind making your own custom tools and lots of the others have done that. Uh, I haven't yet and I probably should but as I said I've been busy, busy with other stuff and I haven't really needed it. I don't know what this is. I think this is cosmetic. There's also been a bit of um, uh, what's the word? Uh, planning going on out here. I, I assume these are all going to be turned into buildings or at least rooms of one building at some point. And uh, Mike was talking about having a single construction area for building things. So maybe that's what this is going to be. I guess we'll find out. Are these paper trees? No, these are eucalyptus. Oh, those are the paper trees over there. So if I want paper, I can go and punch those trees. Nice. What else has been happening? This thing over here looks new. I don't remember this. Um, yes, I don't know what this is. What's that? Uh, crystallized mineral. Lovely. Um, I don't know what this building's for. It's got a rooftop terrace, and yeah, I don't know. We'll probably probably find out in an, in, in in a future episode. Pete has been starting to play with mystical agriculture, which is not Britannia. It's another um, plant related thing. So what that allows you to do is it, it, it means you can grow these various different types of weird novelty seeds. Um, and then these can somehow and I don't know exactly how, but you can turn these um, you can turn these plants once they're grown into their thing. So you plant you plant a stone seed, a stone plant grows and you can then harvest it to get stone. You plant an inferium seed, an inferium plant grows, you harvest it to get inferium. And a wood seed, you plant it, a wood plant grows and you harvest it to get wood. Now, I think that might just be a tree, but maybe it works differently. Maybe you can, I imagine there's some sort of automated way of harvesting these, which will make it much, much better in the long run. And so uh, Pete has been collecting the various different types of um, essences over here to make those uh, make those plants and very all, all kinds of seeds and apparently worms and uh, as well and various other stuff to, to, to be getting on with that at least part of the reason he started doing this was because he was struggling with the uh, cooking uh, quest lines uh have i overshot no this is actually where i wanted to go where's the kitchen where's the door i think the door's on the other side of the building probably to stop people just using it as a way through to get from a to b can i run through these yes does it break them? No. Excellent. Those look spiky. Those are spiky. Ow. Right. So the way into the kitchen is down here. That took, it took a bit of finding. <laughs> it, it is known. Um, and so, yes, he's been carrying on down here, presumably trying to make more different types of cooked food. He was talking about trying to make various types of chicken dish at one point, um, but having a problem with insufficient chickens and not wanting to go out and kill the uh, the chickens in the chicken farm out here, um, which I'm pretty sure is the whole point of a chicken farm, but um, maybe, maybe we're actually just keeping them for the eggs. We, I guess we'll see. One of our pigs has got drunk again and fallen asleep. Um, or maybe two of them. Is that a pig as well? I oh no, that's a, that's a ram or a goat. Maybe I don't know. I don't do animals. Um, and all the cows have gone to sleep. I suppose it is night time, so it's probably fair enough that all the animals are asleep. Tristan has, by the sounds of it, been largely resource gathering recently. Um, I hesitate to say any sort of just in that because I think he's also. I think he was also involved in all the stuff that was going on over there in the smeltery that I um, may have falsely attributed to Mike. Um, so there's been a lot of busy stuff going on here. I believe also the um, the smeltery, the, sm the actual smeltery itself, has been significantly expanded. As you can see, if we look down through the hole here, that now goes down a long way into the ground, which means there's an enormous amount of space in it to put um, stuff. Where's the control box for this thing? Is it that one? Yes. Um, so there's there's capacity in this for uh, 4,800 ingots, which is a crazy amount of stuff. Um, but I, I think it's just been made this big for future proofing. 
So earlier, and I nearly forgot about this, earlier I mentioned that Mike had been producing enormous quantities of blood, and it turns out the way he'd done that was that the um, the smeltery here had previously had a lid over the top of it, which meant it was dark inside it, so there were mobs spawning in it. And it turned out there was one mob that spawned with some sort of healing power capability thing so it was just being very gradually tortured ne but never to death and just bled and bled and bled so enormous quantities of blood has been built up inside the smeltery as you can see if i if i, if I look on here uh, we've got uh, 166 buckets worth of blood and that's a ridiculous amount um i don't know what we're going to do with this I, I i imagine it's probably going to stay there until i as the uh, the dark wizard find some sort of use for large quantities of blood and then i guess i'll come over and try and start harvesting it and carrying it over there um the only problem is it's some sort of dirty blood uh, which makes maybe makes sense i have no idea um so it needs to be purified first and i believe that means it needs to be run through the blood infuser which is way over there in the tower so you take it over there you run it through the infuser and that cleans it up and then all is lovely and bloody it can be used and improved so as i was saying tristan has been working hard on uh, resource generation where am i i'm here okay so if i go over this way boom there's no doubt that means there's lots and lots of stuff in all of the chests over here. He said something about having made an extra thousand charcoal, which is uh, this one. And that's going to be very useful for feeding the endother endo flames over in the tower. So if I claim um, a stack of this, is it like that? That's how you claim a stack, yes. And then put it in the, I think this is a compa I think this is the compacting, no, don't put that in there. I think this is the compacting drawer. If I put all the charcoal in it, there we go. Yes, we can take the blocks of charcoal out the top. Like that. Oh, and that one piece out as well. And that can be then put over in the endo flame, as I shall demonstrate in a moment, and then hopefully generate decent amounts of, of mana. Um, he might have been doing some sorting over here in all of these, um, all, all of these uh, chests. I don't, I don't really know. But he does, does say he's also put in some extra of these um, requester chests. I mean, I say requester chests, like they're Factorio, and there's going to be some bots bringing stuff over. But actually, it's more, it's more of a system that just says these are things I would like for something I'm trying to make. And over here, we can um, have on, on this list here, we can say what things we are currently short of. So at the moment, we are apparently, we reckon we've got enough blood. That seems fair. We've got enough will. Also seems fair. Um, we are, however, always always short of food because people keep eating it. And power and grid power is always is stuff that is being gradually worked towards. So it's a bit of a to-do list. And then over here, we've got the list of the things that are going to be needed for future, future projects. Now, let's see, let's go back over to the tower. Oh yes, first time. So, as I was saying earlier, we've got these we've got these two endotherms. So if I come over to here, we can um, chuck down a couple of these. Right. So, so, actually, I probably want to chuck these out together. Come think of it. So chuck one at each flower. There we go. They've both picked them up. They're now burning. So that should mean we're now generating mana at a decent rate I and mean, we probably won't even be, won't won't see this go up at all because it's it's a very very slow process to generate the mana but we can you can see we've got the uh, the blue twinklies coming off this plant here so that is is now working it is generating the mana all is happy up here and that is why I think we've got so much of the um of the charcoal blocks available because when you when you fuel an endo endo flame it will burn it can only pick up one thing at a time so if I chuck down lots of charcoal blocks on top of it they would despawn before it used them all probably um but if i chuck one if i chuck one charcoal block on it it'll burn it for quite a long time if i chuck one piece of charcoal on it it'll burn it quickly and then and not produce very much fuel so the dense the more fuel you can fit in a single item the more effective it is to go over and just chuck the flight chuck the stuff at them and, and, and then leave them burning as you can see and um yeah they are happily being um being picked up as you can and the other thing you can you can do with this wand is you can check that there's a you see on the on the right hand side of the uh, of the um line of the uh, progress bar there we've got that um we've got the symbol for the mana spreader and with a tick next to it and that tells us that this one is is getting its mana picked up which is not very nice of it to tell me that so i think yes i'm going to need at some point i'm going to need to come through here and, and basically fix this up so that there's a better way of growing all these plants um and, and and just neaten the whole whole area up a little bit so that shouldn't be too hard though now I really do think that's everything I have to talk about. So thank you for watching. Uh, do come along on Monday and watch the stream while I'll be um, expanding this out a bit more and sorting so sorting some of the things out I've been talking about and hopefully trying to improve things. What is what is that? Is that a bat of some sort? Oh, it's a butterfly. 
Oh, how lovely. Um, apparently I can pick it up with a shovel. No, I think that might have been this. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe it's just a, a, a creature. Anyway, yes, come along on Monday to watch the streams. Come along on Wednesdays to watch the uh, the Factorio space exploration streams. They're um, also also going out. They're also uh, a lot of fun. And then there's these videos. The video you're watching right now, in fact, and the Factorio equivalent of it will come out on Saturdays and Sundays. And at the moment, I'm releasing GTA videos on Thursdays because that seems like a good way of splitting the week up a bit. So, yes, don't forget to, forget to come along and watch all of that. It's um, There's been some good stuff recently, and, um, and we're having a lot of fun with it. Thank you for watching. I shall see you in the next one.